Good morning, dear friends. I greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have a God who loves us, loves us enough to give himself for us. And today he is with us. He has given us this new day to live and glorify him. And let us meditate on his word before we begin our activities today. And the blessings of God be upon you and the Holy Spirit bless you and lead you. Today's meditation is centered around the Gospel according to St. John chapter 8 verses 1 to 11. And the title of this meditation is Same Object Seen Two Opposing Way. Among the crowd in the temple that morning, there were lots of people early in the morning. Almost all of them had crooked eyes. What do I mean by crooked eyes? I meant that none of them could see people or things in its reality. People with their condition. Jesus arrived there too early in the morning and he began to teach the crowd. And suddenly there was a commotion in the court of the temple. Men were shouting as they were dragging a woman and uh, coming near Jesus, throwing her in front of Jesus and they were demanding a verdict from him. They said this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In other words, she is a harlot. And the law of Moses says, such a woman must be stoned to death along with the man. I'm mad. But now, teacher, what do you say? What is your verdict? And um, most of the men, Jesus noticed, most of the men were carrying stones ready to stone her to death. And um, Jesus told them, all right, go ahead and fulfill the command or the law of Moses. Kill her, stone her to death along with the man. But the problem that day was, nobody was able to answer the question, where is the man? Now we notice that neither did Jesus care about it, because Jesus knew the intention of these men. They were there purposely, deliberately, bringing this woman to catch Jesus at anything he says. If he says, do not do that, and uh, show love and compassion, then they can accuse him of uh, contradicting Moses' law. And so he is not a true Jew. And he will say, now go ahead and kill her. Then also they can accuse, oh, you claim to be compassionate and love. How can you say you go ahead, go ahead and kill her? So where is your stand? See, Jesus knew all these things. And so he gave them permission and agreed with them. She deserved to be killed and you go ahead and extorn her to death. But then he gave a condition. He attached a condition to this verdict. He said the one who should cast the first stone should be the one among you who had never sinned. Wow. And then he stooped down and started writing on the sand. And then suddenly, all this crowd, all these men were looking at each other. And slowly, slowly, the stones were dropped from their hands. And they began to leave one by one. The oldest one first and then followed by the younger one until only this shaking, shivering, shattered woman was left with Jesus.
And so Jesus looked at her. Woman, has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, master. And then he said, neither do I condemn you. Now go and do not sin again. Perhaps the man who was caught also was one of the uh, members of the crowd standing with the stone. And after committing her to the mercies of this crowd, heartless, unkind, unconcerned, he began to write on the sand. And there was silence all around. And, the, and the, as the crowd was watching the writing, what he was writing, I do not know whether these members in the crowd actually read what he was writing, but this was the only time it is uh, uh, spoken of Jesus writing something. And that too he wrote on the sand, and so it was it could not, it could not be preserved and slowly slowly the crowd began to melt and only this woman was left with jesus now i want you to notice one thing how differently this woman was seen first let us look at the way the crowd jeering at her and uh, wanting her blood, how did they see her? And they brought her to Jesus as an adulteress, a harlot. <clears throat> and the members of the crowd saw her filthy, dirty, and worthless, doesn't deserve to live and uh, not eligible, cursed, useless, untouchable, worthy to die, a worthless soul. That is the way the crowd saw her. That is one way. And the same woman was seen by the Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. How did he see her? That is my subject. I want you to notice that. Jesus saw her. He saw her as a very precious soul. Worthy to live. Needed to be cleansed. And needed to be loved. And needed to be changed. And uh, worthy to live. And she, she deserves to be accepted as a new member among the people who were transformed and changed by this man who now is looking at her. Oh, hallelujah. What a difference. And she has never seen such gentleness with eyes full of love and compassion. And the voice is so sweet and understanding. As she spoke to her woman, as no one condemned you, to which she said, No, Lord, this thoroughly shaken, shattered, and a broken woman has never heard such words of love and compassion. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. You go home 
and do not sin again. And my friends, she was never the same. I like to imagine that she was one of those 120 waiting in the upper room to receive the Holy Spirit when Jesus has promised that he would send from heaven. And she was one of those first who received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I am sure she became a great witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, telling everybody how this man changed and transformed her into a new creation with a new hope. As I close this, close this I want to ask this, am I speaking to anyone who feels the same way this woman felt. Useless, worthless, and nobody cares. Nobody bother if you are alive or dead. And there is no hope for you because of the way you have lived your past. You begin to look down on yourself and you see no hope of any change coming upon you. But this morning, I stand here by the authority of God's word to let you know that there is someone who loves you and who cares for you and who sees how worthy you are. He alone can see the worth of you, my dear friends, no matter how low you have fallen in your sin and in your rebellion against God. God still looks upon you with compassion and love. He sees that you are a precious soul who need to be changed and cleansed, need to be accepted and loved, and needs to be included among people who have been transformed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you. He only is waiting to come in humility and repentance. Oh, what joy fills this woman that day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that your eyes will be opened. And you will come to Jesus. In a moment's time, he can change your whole life, cancel your past, and give you a new life presently and a new hope for your future. God bless you as you take the step of faith and acknowledge Christ as the life changer, life transformer. Father, I thank you for everyone who is taking this step of faith and is talking to you in humility and in brokenness of spirit. And I pray that your mercy and your grace will be given to him or her. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Friend, God bless you. This is a great day to live for him. Begin your life with him. Have a good day. Amen.